Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs. So again, back to our Playwright API series. In the last session, what we have seen, we have seen how to call a simple get call and then how exactly we were getting the response. We were validating the response. We were converting the response into the JSON object mappers. And we have seen how to fetch the status code, status, status line, headers and everything. We have seen that. Today, I'm going to talk about one more important thing that what do you mean by dispose method? This is also a very interesting method. Dispose the body of this response. If not called, then the body will stay in memory until the context closes. And the method name is on the response. The moment you get the response and once the response work is done, you can just simply call this method dispose method. It will dispose means it will delete the body from the response, right? So let's see how to do this. So very simple, very straightforward. Let's create a new class for that. So I'm going to write, let's see, this is my API uh, dispose test, right? And I'll do one thing. I'll start directly. A couple of things I'll just copy paste from here. That first we have to initialize the playwright context and the request context and everything. So let's initialize that. Then I'm going to write my at the rate after test also that playwright dot close method also we are going to call it here and then i'm going to write my at the rate a uh, test annotation and here i'm going to write that a uh, public let's see void and let's see dispose response test method that i'm going to write it here okay so response actually and i'll do one thing i simple call this the same api that i'm that i'm using it here that Simple call this, give me all the users, status code up to 100, status text also you can capture it. And then you can really want to capture the uh, API response text also. So till here, I'm just going to copy and then same thing, I'm going to paste it here. Okay, so this is about my request number one. So I'll just comment it out that this is my request number one. Okay, fine. Now I'll do one thing, whatever the response that I have captured, First, let's run it and let's see, is it really giving me the response or not? And we are printing the response text. We are printing the status code and uh, okay. So it should give you, yeah, 200 status code, which is coming here. You can see, okay. And then it's giving me the response here. Also that ID name and everything. Now what I'll do, I'll just try to dispose the response. So this is a response that we have captured API response. And then I'm going to write this method, dispose method completely. If you see this dispose method, say same thing, dispose the body of this response. It means from this API response, now the body is gone. So I'll do one thing. I'll just try to print the API response after dispose once again. Okay. So I'll say print API response after dispose. Let's see what exactly I'm getting. So again, run it and let's see what happens. So if the dispose is done and again, still you are fetching the text method that in that case, it's saying, see this uh, dispose with the plain text and the test got failed. It's saying the response has been disposed here and it's giving you the playwright exception. So hence prove that if the response is disposed, then after that, you cannot fetch the body. So it's only applicable for the body or for the status code also. Let's see. Now I'm going to write that the status code once again. So let's see, I'm just trying to fetch the status code and then print the status code and the status text also that we will try to print it once again. So we will see that is it really applicable for the uh, body or the status code is also disposed. So I'll say, okay, let's see, this is my uh, status code number one. And then I'm just trying to print this response code after dispose. Okay, let's see, are we really getting or not? So run it again and uh, let's see. Okay, one thing here, it will give you the exception, obviously. So once the exception is thrown, it will not reach here. So I'll do one thing for time being, I'm just going to comment it out these two lines. So let me just comment it out. First you respond, uh, dispose the response and then fetch the status code quickly. Let's run it again. Otherwise what will happen at line number 43, it will throw the exception. So then it will not execute line number 44. So let's see now this time, see it's not giving you any error. It's saying here yeah, response code is 200. So dispose method will dispose. I'll write it for you guys that dispose method will dispose only the response body. Okay. 
response body, but the status code and let's see the status uh, response URL and the status uh, text will remain same. Whatever the status text, okay, or any kind of message that you are getting, it will remain same. Remember this thing will remain same, right? So I hope it's clear. Okay, now there is one more thing. I'll do one thing. Let's see, this method is giving you the exception. So I can just quickly uh, put it inside the try catch block if you really want to do that because this dispose method is getting called and then now this text method is giving you the exception, right? So I'll do one thing. I'll just store it in the try catch block. So let's write one try and this line is giving you the exception. So I'm going to write inside the catch and what kind of exception we are getting. We are getting playwright exception E and let's say I'm storing in this particular method. I mean in the catch block and then I'm writing simple as out here and then I'm printing that uh, the API response a body is disposed. Okay, fine. So now you don't need to comment it out. Now this line will throw the exception. We have handled the exception properly and uh, it will try to capture that status and the status code. Also a status text. Also, I'll try to print status text means this particular text. So let's copy this status uh, text and then I'm going to print it over here. So let's see, I have taken a status text one and then I'm just using it over here. And I really want to print system dot dot uh, print Allen with S out. I really want to print that uh, the URL also, right? So I'm writing that uh, response URL, whatever the response URL from the response from the API response dot. Remember this method we covered URL method. Is it going to uh, dispose the URL also? Let's see. So I'm going to run it again. Right. So it's absolutely working fine. Although it's giving you the exception. That's why it's coming that AP response is disposed. So here you can see that. Yeah. Let's see this. See AP response is disposed because of the try catch and then a status code we are getting a status text. Also, we are getting the response code uh, code and the text and the response URL also we are getting. So remember this thing, whenever you are going to dispose any response, it will just delete or dispose means delete. It will remove the status body. I mean the response body, not the status text or URL. Everything will remain same. Perfect. Now that's what, if you see the method is available here. Now there is one more method on the request context. Also, you can use it. So right now we have applied the dispose method on the API response, whatever the response after hitting the get call, right? But what if I apply the request context dot dispose method that also we can do it. So let's see, I'm writing that my request a uh, context dispose. Hmm. So can we do that at the context level? Can we dispose? Let's see dot see. This is also dispose method is there. It means whatever the API that you have written, whatever the call that you have written with the request context, all those api body will be disposed so in order to test it what exactly i'm going to do that so with this request context how many apis we have called only one method see this particular api we have called and we are calling this particular url here this is a get call url i'll do one thing i'm just going to create one more api response let's see somewhere uh over here request number two that i'm going to create right so i'll do one thing i'll just come here Let's see, this is my request number two. The request number two is, is uh, I'm saying store response number one. And this time I'm going to change some other API. Let's see, I'm going to use this one, request rest.in. We can take this one. And uh, there is one API that list all users or single user also we can take it. So let's see, I'm going to take this one that API users number two. So I'm writing API forward slash users two. It means give me the response for the second user and simple. This is a get call storing in the API response one. Nice. Okay. Now I'll do one thing. I'm going to write system dot our advent Allen get a response body for 
okay for the second request this is what let's see i'm just going to uh, print it here so how will you print it the same thing that i can directly write let's see s out and then then i'm going to write the uh, status uh, code which is what which is i'm going to use api response one dot i'm going to write see the status the status should be 200 or whatever is there 200 will be there right and uh, i'm just going to print the body also so here i'm writing the response body as well the response body will be simple i'm going to use the body method here right now let's see the request number two is working or not so for time being i'm just going to uncomment this request context dot dispose so response request number two response also we are trying to capture so here you can see that yeah it's uh, running and uh, you can see this one the request number two is yes we can see that 200 status code at the response body also we are getting i'll do one thing the response body instead of writing body i'm going to write the text here so it will give you the complete text so let's quickly run it again and then we will see the request context dot dispose method okay so here you can see yeah we are getting whatever janet we were request res dot in you can see same response we are getting now just try to understand one thing this with this request context how many requests we have sent this is the second request and this is the request number one that is the this one this is go res dot co dot in now i'm using only one single context right guys and then with the same context i'm going to dispose everything now i'm going to check after disposing the complete context I'll just try to print what the body of the second response. And now I really want to uh, print same thing, the body of the first response, right? So I'm saying request one body, and this is your request two body, something like this. So let's see what happens. Now I'm going to run it again. So it will dispose bo both the request bodies. Okay, the response body. So here you can see that we are getting an exception here that yes, the response has been uh, disposed from here. But what will happen because of this line, the response okay, is disposed. So it is not going to commit over here, right? So I'll do one thing now. We have already seen that this response dot text is completely disposed. So we are getting an exception. So we cannot fetch it now. Let's try with the AP response one also. So I'm just going to comment it out this one. And for the response number two, Okay, response actually response number two also we will try to fetch it. So let's run it again. Okay, there's a typo in the spelling mistake, so I'll do that. Now see, this is absolutely working fine. We are expecting this exception, right? Because obviously, the response two body is also completely disposed. Here you can see that this is completely disposed. So let me just write response number two, and this is your response one. So. You can use a dispose method. So what is the learning here? The learning here is that you can use a dispose method on the specific response also on the specific API response, or you can use the dispose on the complete context. Also, you can do it because in playwright, what happens? Everything is returned in the form of everything is implemented in the form of context. Just like we were using the browser context to launch two browsers, let's see two Chrome browsers. I really want to use so I can. For the same browser, I can create multiple browser context. Same thing I can create with the same request context. I can hit multiple APIs. So it works like that. See this. If I have, let's see, one request context that I have created from this particular request context, I can create multiple requests. Let's see, one is with the get call for the get user. This is, let's see, a get employee, get customer, and then let's see one more API that we have created. So same request context is using this URL also, is using this URL also, is using this one also, and is using this one also. So how many dispose method I can use? I can use dispose directly for this particular request. That also I can do it. So dispose at the individual response level, I can do it. I can dispose this response also, or I can uh, dispose this response also. Or I can do one thing, I can dispose completely at the context level also. I can do it. So this is what, this is my request uh, context. And these are my individual requests. I'll say request number one. This is my request number two. 
something like this. Okay, and let's see, this is my request number uh, three and then so on, request number four. Every request uh, will have a response. So whatever the response we are getting, we can dispose it. So I hope it's clear now. We can individually dispose the uh, request or overall request context also we can dispose it. The advantage is that once your work is done, you can simply dispose the response body. And then later on, if you really want to call it again, again, the response body will be updated. In that case, you can easily release some memory uh, from the, you know, from the mem uh, release some space from the memory, and then you can just continue with the blank response body also. But remember a status and the status code and the URL will remain same. It will just dispose the body. I hope this is clear about the dispose method. Right. So this method is not available in the postman and the rest assured directly. Although there also we can do it with the rest assured. There are some other ways of doing it. But here the direct method is available in the playwright. We can start using it. In the next chapter, I'll tell you about headers also. Although we have already seen the headers we were storing inside the map. We'll create one more small video for the headers array. If you really want to fetch all the headers in the form of headers array, that also we can use it. Okay. So we'll see that as well. Otherwise, almost everything we have done with respect to API response. And then we will start other calls like authentication, post call, put call, delete call, OAuth 1.0, 2.0, all those things we are going to see in the upcoming chapters. So that's all for this video, guys. I hope you like it. I'll check in this code. I'll share the GitHub repository URL in the description of this video and the first comment of this video. Please share it with others and then try to implement your API framework along with your browser framework with the playwright together. You don't need to use two frameworks like just like we do it in selenium selenium separately and the rest are short separately in playwright you don't need to do it thank you so much i'll see you in the next video till then take care and god bless you all guys